many years, the FBI has sought and received valuable assistance from the American people. In our efforts against the criminal threat, countless Americans have answered our calls for help. Together, we've all worked to keep our country safe. Today, I ask your help in combating another threat, the threat to our national security posed by hostile intelligence services. As many of you know, communist countries want information about our defense capabilities and our scientific development and our technological breakthroughs. But they're seeking this information both openly and secretly, with a greater intensity and with a larger commitment of resources than at any time in our history. In this open, democratic society of ours, much is available to them simply for the asking. The cost of a subscription to a scientific magazine or the registration fee to a scientific conference is a small price for them to pay for advances we've taken years to develop. Much of this information, though useful to our foes, may be legitimately and legally obtained under our law. But our concern is the more sinister and clandestine activity of hostile intelligence officers. What these officers cannot buy over the counter, they'll steal, often using unsuspecting Americans who have access to technological, scientific, military, and economic information. These officers are often able to steal our secrets by persistently contacting and methodically recruiting our fellow citizens to work for them. For various reasons, some Americans willingly assist these hostile intelligence officers, while other citizens give away secrets without realizing it. Foreign counterintelligence is a top priority of the FBI to monitor, to counter, and to block the clandestine activities of hostile intelligence services is at the heart of our mission. We're engaged in a quiet war of wits with some very formidable intelligence officers, such as the Soviet Union's KGB and its military counterpart, the GRU. To carry out intelligence tasks in the United States, hostile intelligence operatives hide behind legitimate professional cover roles, diplomats, trade representatives, students, and journalists are some of the guises of these highly trained and sophisticated spies. Through these covers, they gain access to political, economic, demographic, strategic, and military information about our country. From sites in New York, Washington, San Francisco, Chicago, Houston, and other urban centers. Hostile intelligence officers are working within our cities and against our country. We estimate that one out of every three diplomats from a communist country is in reality an intelligence officer. The ultimate goal of these intelligence officers is, as I will repeat again, to recruit Americans to work for them. These intelligence officers are not always easy to identify. But many of their tactics of recruitment are by now all too familiar to us in the FBI. Perhaps most familiar, though, are the seemingly innocent ways they begin their targeting. In deceptively idle conversations with Americans from all walks of life, hostile intelligence officers are carefully evaluating the strengths and weaknesses of their American contacts. They may then try to exploit weaknesses like taking advantage of a certain character flaw or pressing a financial need or a psychological dependence of some kind. They also seek to establish close personal friendships with Americans, taking keen personal interest in their jobs and hobbies. Once a friendship is established, the intelligence officer may begin asking for what may seem like harmless favors or holding out the promise of a lucrative business deal. Their techniques are very subtle, and seldom do we see outright blackmail used in the United States. These ploys may appear neither sinister nor illegal, but they're now well recognized by the FBI. No matter how cunningly disguised, they are the first revealing steps taken by hostile intelligence officers down the path toward the recruitment of Americans. The training manuals of the KGB and other hostile intelligence services state very clearly 
that greed is the main motivating force of Americans. But they also seek out those who disagree with American policies, those with a dissatisfaction at work, or those with a fondness for the intriguing cloak and dagger world of espionage. The FBI has learned much about this world in the almost half century of countering hostile intelligence activity. The one thing we have learned most, certainly over the years, is that we cannot successfully combat the menace threatening our country without your cooperation. For this reason, the FBI has a vital need to know about your contacts with representatives from communist countries letting us know about seemingly innocuous or confidential meetings can assist the FBI in evaluating the missions of these foreign representatives. With your help, we can determine which of these representatives are intelligence officers and monitor more closely their activities. The help of American citizens is important to all FBI undertakings, and certainly in the counterintelligence arena. We cannot succeed without your assistance. I urge you to report contacts with representatives from communist countries to your security officer, if you have one, and to your local FBI office. We can keep America the most advanced and free country in the world, and we can do it by working together.